Hi, I'm Mark from ereplacementparts.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a new piston and cylinder kit in a Campbell Haasfeld oilless air compressor. We'll get started by removing the pump from the tank. And to do that, we need to disconnect the wire that goes between the motor and the pressure switch. I'll start by removing the pressure switch cover. Now I have access to the wire connections inside the pressure switch. I'll remove these top two wires first. They're the ones that go to the motor. And I'll also remove the ground wire. Now just release the cord relief and pull the wires out of the pressure switch. Now I'll remove the front pump cover. It's held in place with just a couple of bolts. Next I'll remove the airline that runs between the pump and the tank. It's a good idea to make sure you have no pressure in the tank before you do this. Now there's four bolts that connect the pump to the tank. I'll remove those and then I can lift the pump away from the tank. Now that I have the pump removed from the tank, I can remove the rest of the pump cover. It's held in place with just a couple more bolts. Now we have access to the valve plates, the cylinder, the piston, and the connecting rod. Now I'll go ahead and remove the valve plates. As I remove the plates, you'll want to take note of how everything goes together. In fact, it wouldn't be a bad idea to make some drawings or even snap a couple of pictures of this so you know how it all goes back together when it's time to reassemble. With the valve plates removed, now we have access to the cylinder, the piston, and the connecting rod, and we'll remove those next. To do that, we need to remove the cooling fan. And I'll use a couple of screwdrivers to pull the fan away from the connecting rod. Now I'll loosen the bolt that tightens the connecting rod to the eccentric. Next I'll pull the cylinder sleeve away from the piston. That'll give us a little more play within the piston. And then I'll tap the end of the eccentric shaft to pull the connecting rod away. Now we can install our new piston and cylinder kit. The kit comes with a new o-ring. This will go between the valve plates and the top of the cylinder. So I'll just set it aside for now. Now I'll thread the connecting rod through the top of the pump and insert the cylinder into the pump. Now I'll line up the bearing on the eccentric with the connecting rod. And this time I'll use a rubber mallet to tap the connecting rod onto the bearing. And now I'll just tighten up the connecting rod. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the cooling fan. I'll secure it with the bolt, and I want to apply a little bit of Loctite to that bolt before I reinstall it. Thank you. 
And now I'll place this assembly back onto the cylinder head. Initially, I'm just going to tighten the bolts finger tight, just to get everything aligned. Now I can go ahead and tighten the head bolts on our valve plate assembly. At this point, you'll want to consult your owner's manual, a parts diagram, or other literature that the manufacturer might put out concerning the torque values for these bolts. In some cases, there won't be any values listed, as in the case of my pump. In this case, I just want to evenly tighten the bolts until they're secure. I don't want to over tighten anything because I'll risk smashing the gaskets or even stripping out the threads on the aluminum pump housing. Okay, with our pump reassembled, now I can slide the pump and motor assembly back into the housing. Now I'll slide these support brackets in between the pump and the housing and secure it with one of the bolts. And the same on the other side. Now I'll place the pump assembly back onto the tank and secure it with the bolts. Now I'll reconnect the airline between the pump and the tank. And now I'll reinstall the front pump cover. This one can be a little tricky to get everything aligned, so just take your time and make sure all the tabs get lined up on the sides and the top. Now I'll just thread the motor wires back into the pressure switch and snap the strain relief back into place. Then I can go ahead and reconnect my wires. I'll start with the ground screw. and then the hot and the neutral wire. I just line up white with white. And black with black. And then I can replace the cover. And that's how easy it is to replace the cylinder and piston kit in a Campbell Hosfeld oilless air compressor. We hope that you found this video helpful. Please feel free to leave a comment or ask us a question.